We're talking to Ose Zuzi Bolodeoku, mom of three lovely children, CEO of FOS Creative Arts, an inclusive center that provides support for families and children with special needs. She's an educator. She's a special needs expert. She's a behavior analyst and a cognitive and autism specialist. Only you. Only you. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a lot it's a lot even a lot more than that but hey it's just me <laughs> yeah no totally celebrated totally celebrated we are multi-passionate multi-talented women and nothing to make excuses for no apologies right so welcome thank you, thank you for thank joining you this so evening much. for anyone good evening, who's... Good evening everyone thank you for joining welcome so for anyone who's maybe just seeing me for the first time my name is yeti williams and i'm the founder ceo of lagos moms my passion to profit to you know mission 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 call to the world raising responsible digital citizens the world has gone upside down but parenting has to stay focused our children are the future and we're the only ones that can help them to turn out the way that they're supposed to, right? And of course, there are a lot of challenges. And one of the things I like saying is that there are always going to be challenges depending on the age that you're in, right? I remember growing up and when Patra came out and she had those long braids all the way down to under her bum, right? And I remember one day we went to get our braids done and we were feeling cool, myself and my younger sister, and we got the braids done all the way down, feeling like we're, you know, we're cutting edge. And my dad got home and said, who is, who, who's this braids for? No, 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 no. He was like, what is this nonsense? You people have to go and take it out. We thought he was joking. But to him, it was just like, no, I'm not going to allow my daughters to do hair like this. And that was how we had to go and take the braids out the next day. Oh, wow. So I, know that, I keep remembering that story just to say, if you think about it now, braids to that passes your hips is not even anything compared to the issues right going on in the world that's not even <laughs> that's not even anything at all you know but um really the, the community is really there to support us raising children being all we're meant to be you know balancing it all work-life balance who says we have to choose we can do and 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 but obviously we have to be um we have to be sensitive to the season in life we have to be sensitive to the demands on our time and what you need to do what you need to give out to the world or give your family when maybe you only have one child is very different maybe than when you have three or four children under the age of five so we have to be very careful not to compare ourselves to somebody else's season when that is not our season and so with that said we have you as our mom of the month for may thank yeah. you for that we just love you know i love featuring moms i think women are fantastic and i think women are you know mothers are amazing and we have so much to tell the world we have so much to share so yeah. literally that's why i do it i'm like i have to find somebody is one is not even enough every month but we learn so much right when we take the time to say you know what i don't have all the answers nobody's an expert in parenting nobody is but when we talk more and more and we engage right we learn and we realize we're not on this table alone <laughs> absolutely and even when you have you have one two you have two children three children the parenting style could even the difference what one how you parent one is different from how you parent the other so it's you knowing i i someone was saying to me that oh parenting coach that i should i was like no i i really do not like that parent everybody is different the kids are the children are different it's yeah. you knowing how and understanding how to help your child thrive how to help your child flourish and be and become and um, fulfill their purpose that's that's mm -hmm. it for me so grateful for um having your like um Lagos moms and mothers like um I well some mothers in my life good great support system that like you are one of the digital supports that we have we get premium content I always call say premium 
content when I see your content. I'm like, oh, wow, I never knew this existed. It takes a village. You always say and, that. And I say it takes an e village, you know? It takes yeah. a village. And I actually in like, front. <laughs> it takes an it, e village. Indeed, it does take an e village, yes. So thank you. So with that, I want us to go in and, you know, we're talking about mental health. Last week was Mental Health Awareness Week, you know, and we just thought it'd be great to talk about mental health, but like, but not necessarily from the angle that we always talk about it from, which is, you know, positive mental health. Yes, we know it's important. Yes, we know there are things we can do to make sure that our mental health is you know, healthy because mental health doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. It's just the same way you talk about your physical health. You want to make sure that, you know, you're doing well, you're okay, you are making the right decisions, you're managing the stressors in your life, you know, you're, you're, you're emotionally stable so that you can be your best and you can take care of your children. But we want to talk about a situation where obviously, you know, if we have a neurodiverse child, right? And I love the fact that you have that experience and I love the fact that you use that phrase, neurodiverse. I think I heard it for the first time from your page. And I went to research, I was like, wow, that's such a more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? The word captures it so much more. There's nothing wrong with any one person, right? It's the diversity. So I want you to talk about mm -hmm. that. What does that's neurodiversity wrong. mean for some people who are just hearing it for the first time? Can you hear me? I can hear you. I can hear you now. It was breaking earlier, but I can hear you. You can hear me now. So I was saying, yes, can I... you tell us, tell, tell us about neurodiversity? What does it mean? Okay, like you said, I like the fact, why, what got me captivated with neurodiversity is the fact that we are diverse by nature. We are different. So neuro, the neurodiverse movement is pretty much saying that irrespective of the fact that I have a neurological disorder, I am autistic or I have, I have ADHD, is the way my brain functions is different from the way a neurotypical's brain functions. And you know, the neurotypical child or the neurotypical individual is seen as the normal. But who really is normal? What classifies normal? In Nigeria, in Lagos, are we all normal the way we are? I really <laughs> <laughs> leave that for us to answer. No. So who says what normal is? Because I'm seeing it from, I, I, I see it in a pictorial form or I look at it in a numbers way or I do not understand emotions and the way you do understand emotions does not make me less. It makes me different. So that's what the neurodiverse movement is all about and um it's it also goes to say um we, we now have the neuro that's what neurodiversity but neurodiverse is now the the body where we have the neurotypical and the neurodiversity together so neurodiverse is an umbrella that covers both okay okay that's good <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you also get in. And that, so can you tell us about how you got into the space? You know, how did you become, you know, what I read earlier, your all the skills that you have developed in terms of helping neurodiverse children. Can you tell us how did you how did you come into that space? Is this something you'd always known you would do? Absolutely not. So I started working in a bank after service typical bank is where the money is, right? Mm -hmm. I like However, I really did not, it wasn't, I, I pretty much enjoyed my colleagues more than I enjoyed the work. So then I got married and at that time I was already a Sunday school teacher. My mom was a teacher growing up, so I was already a Sunday school teacher. So I, when I got married, I know my older sister put it in my head that you can be a teacher, you know, you can be a teacher. I said, okay, let me try. It, I wasn't looking at it from the point of, long term as oh, it's convenient let me look around the schools let me look for a school around my neighborhood and the first time i went to a particular school standard bearers in lucky phase one i got a job mm -hmm. i got that very first day i got the job like mrs Odi, amazing woman very compassionate she has a heart for the children and that was how i got into standard bearer school standard bearer school is an inclusive school right? So 
that was my first experience of neurodiversity, meeting children that um, had um, that had speech delay, that had autism or um, ADHD. And I was wondering, I'm an empath by nature and a motivator. So I kind of took an interest in them. I had a, I had a set of twins in my class. They were autistic or they still are autistic like one was non-vocal. She was hyper. She was verbal. She could communicate verbally, but she was non-vocal. So I, I found my way with her. And then my boss would say, are you sure, Zussi, you not do this thing? Are you sure you not just go train and do this? Later on, I had my twins. I still have my twins. They came early. They were very anxious to come into the world. They came, <laughs> they mm -hmm. came early. My son was perfect. He was the one that was chilled in the tummy while my daughter struggled. So my daughter stayed the longest in the NICU. I had them in the States. My daughter stayed the longest in the NICU. However, the, the, my doctor kept saying, I would keep an eye on the boy. I would keep an eye on the boy. And I was wondering, what is she all about? This boy is fine. And as <laughs> because of my spirituality, oh, blood of Jesus, this my son is doing well. Anyways, got mm -hmm. back, got back with the kids. They, my doctor very kindly. So, did. so while while your doctor said that she would keep an eye on your son in the US, did they say why? Did they say what the reason was that she was advising that if I were you, I would keep an eye on him, like. Keep a close eye on him. Him. That was, those were her words. Keep a very close eye on him. I was. I asked, why do, should, would I keep a close eye on him? She said something. She said, "You see the girl because the girl was always um, she was moving around a lot, like looking for food and or she is a fighter. Mm. But the boy was so chilled. So you need to like keep a close eye if you, he needs support to like." for developmental milestones and all okay. yes a boy and a girl so and the and of course girls are different from boys growing yes. up more developmental milestones the girl was ticking 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 the boy was a bit slower and typical of the environment where i live all girls are faster you shouldn't worry about it and oh i wasn't quite worried about it not until um they if they were like 13 months 14 months and of course my daughter started walking my son was quite he would only stand up on tippy toes and for me that tippy toes were red flag red flag <laughs> he wouldn't respond to his name sometimes he would respond to his name i'm bearing in mind that i was in an environment an inclusive environment. I had uh, some basic knowledge of right. what to do. So I pretty much started um, intervention, what I call intervention now, being a mom just wanting to help her son when he was 17 months. Mm. Remember my mo mother-in-law calling me to say, I, I actually forgot this until recently. My mother-in-law called me to say, oh, you, my mother-in-law was God bless her so sweet, lovely lady, Mrs. Bolo Dioku called me and said, you this silly girl. Don't you think something would be wrong with this boy? You better do something. I was wondering, like, mommy, what is it? Mm. She said, immediately after that call, I got a physiotherapy okay. to come home and start working. If I know, knew what I know now, of course, I don't think I would go for a physiotherapist immediately, but I said, no. okay. But right. for his toes to come massage his toes, to come do this, to come do that at home. And that was how my journey began pretty much. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was in, a small it was in a small inclusive school. Thankfully, the head of school then would call me to say, um, I think he likes piano. He likes to go to the keyboard. Okay. I, I got him a keyboard. He had coordination um, issues. Like okay. he wasn't, he, he was... He, he still doesn't know how to dance. <laughs> but how old are they now? The they are nine. They're actually nine this Sunday. I got a yeah. choreographer. Mm -hmm. And that was how the creative aspect started. So 
I would get friends, the, the children of friends, and their friends to come and do all the creativity and all. Then 2018 came, I went for night of worship. I would like to even say this here because I have not, as I say it to people one on one, I've never shared this okay. in an open, yes, I would like to say this here. I went for night of worship. Night of worship was organized by Pastor Taiwo Bolodio, who is family as well. So I went there with my friend and I was telling my friend that, oh, I don't know what to do next, what step to take next in my life. I don't, really do not know where I need to pray for purpose, I need to pray for this and that. My friend was like, ah, don't worry, God has got you, don't worry. You are not a housewife. Or... I said, I'm, I'm worried, that I don't want to be a housewife. Mm. You are another child and I didn't want to stay at home. I don't want to be a housewife. Then she said, you are not a housewife. Oh. You are a Proverbs 31 woman. Then I laughed. Like, I, I, what does that really mean? Maybe I should go and read it up. Mm -hmm. Soon after, we had um, Dunsi Oyinko. He's a, he's a gospel musician. He's a gospel minister. I had never heard of him before. He came up stage. And when he did, I said, who is this guy? People were really excited. Who's this right. guy? They said, you don't know him. This guy is really good. As soon as he started ministering, I told my friend that, man, this guy is really good. Like, after this ministration, probably we can go home and I'm fine. Then I stood up and started worshiping. In less than five minutes, like about five minutes after, five or less, he said, wait a minute. There's a young lady here. The Lord said, I should tell you, you are not a housewife or... Oh, wow. You are like that. <laughs> Every time I say that, I have goosebumps. Wow. Like, you are not like, oh, you are the real proverbs that one woman, and the Lord says, You are light. Mm. It's light. As a then, the creative thing I was doing with the kids, they were just doing in my house, was it's false. False means light. The Lord says, You are, um, I should say, you are light. I'm bringing children your way. The ones they call autistic. The ones that say cannot speak, I'm bringing them your way. Bring them back to me. It was so clear. My friend heard me like this, and I was like, oh, wow. Like, uh, that's amazing. That was a word for you. And that was a word for me. It was too direct. It was too... Because now my friend still calls me to say, make sure you tell people that this is a calling. It's not yeah. anything but calling. So um, that's how, it, immediately after I left there, I started looking for the next thing to, mm. to, what am I going to, like, what am I really going to do? I, I have all this education, all these certifications, qualifications, I really need to get, I am not a mediocre by any means. When I do things, I do them right. And that was how my, all the certifications that you've been measuring, I never yeah. joined. Came in. That's it. <laughs> wow. Wow. Amazing. So after that, that was when you knew you were supposed to work with children, specifically special needs. And then the, how did you go from that to starting your center and focusing on the creative side of working with children that are neurodiverse? Okay. So after receiving that word, it started, it's every, my journey from work, my journey from working with st standard bearers, to having my son started adding up and making sense like why did i have to have a son that um, even up to that point you know there was no um doubt um he didn't have a proper diagnosis he didn't have because everywhere you go everywhere we went to oh he would be fine ah this fine boy he would be fine being in the space i know why I, we got that because parents to get that a lot and i'll talk about that later it started adding up making sense and then i was telling my my husband that i wanted a bigger space i didn't just want the children that when i had my certification to practice now i didn't just want the children to start coming into the house not into my and my father-in-law kept telling my husband, you don't understand what she's saying. And he told me that the, the day he came over, I said, 
come, let's take a walk. We went to the back of the house. He said, but this is space. And the very next day, he got the workers in and they laid the foundation and they built me where I have right now. And that was how I started. We are not two years yet, but pretty much that's how I first started. My focus on creativity, creativity helps my son. It's one of the major main therapies I use for my son. My son has a proper diagnosis now, and I'm glad I did do the work. Coming mm -hmm. from just a mom, and mm -hmm. what we all I knew then. So, yes, music helped him a lot. He still doesn't dance. He dances however we want to dance. Mm -hmm. He loves he plays chess and all those other creative things that he like. Right now he does boxing and um, yes, coding and all that. So yes, awesome. I look at the strengths of the child. What are the, what is your child's strengths? So and how do you help them harness upon the strengths to flourish and thrive? Really? Right. I see. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that background and sharing about your experience as in worship and even that you obeyed because you could have heard the word and be like maybe somebody else is talking to right so the fact is, because you could have said no that one is for that person not me so you <laughs> and you ran with it and you mentioned something i want us to talk about a little bit more before we move on you said that you know people kept telling you oh this fine boy he will be fine and you said that you want to talk about that so i think can we talk about that within the context of our culture right Absolutely. Where yeah. There's faith. Yes, there's faith that there's nothing God cannot do. But we also need to be realistic when we see that maybe a child is different. And the earlier we know, the earlier we can support, the earlier we can intervene. So can you talk about that from that perspective of our culture? And exactly what you said you heard, that people kept telling you, this fine boy, he will be fine. How is that a diagnosis? Do you know what I mean? So oh, I, I know, I know. Okay, so I worry about true i'm worried for children that are that can easily slip through the crack right. you know children that are not when we talk about the spectrum or we talk about the severity of any um neurological um, disorder now there's a there's a severity to it there's the mild there's the moderate and there is the um, um really the severe right so when you have children that are not so severe or moderately severe and they are quite mild, yet you don't want to say anything. These children can easily sleep. Oh, it's a boy thing. Yeah. I had a lot of, oh, it's a boy. Boys are like that. Boys are all over the place. And I said, mm. no, this is not a boy thing. This is, a, when you have um, issues with executive functioning, you have issues with focus you have issues with coordination there's just they are just too much most mm. fine cross motors issues there are too many issues the fact is no one wants to say because they are not using any diagnostic tool anyways medical right. doctors just do their maybe 30 minutes thing with you highest they'll use a scale a scale and they'll use the lowest level of the scale to find that does he do this does he do that does he do that okay fine he does all this it's good then the other people will say god forbid it's not for my mouth that they will hear that this kind of thing okay. is happening to the child you know not knowing that you're not really helping you're keeping the parents hopeful you're having the parents may sincerely looking for help we see a lot of parents and they suspect they know but they are just looking for that help somewhere yeah. that will tell them, i know i think i have an idea and i think you hardly get that in this society mm. you hardly unless you go to the professionals mm. unless and the professionals are not so we are not too many yeah we are not so. another thing i would like to put out there is please we need more people in the space <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we're still not having as as many professionals as we need. Now, you know, you mentioned something as well because of your past experience working in the school and you worked in a school that was inclusive. You had some experience with, you yes. know, you had you saw it, you you had experience with it. So that might have helped you in terms of when you noticed it in your son 
you could do some things on your own even before you got a proper diagnosis right so what would you say is a step for a parent who feels like maybe there's something because instincts are strong right instincts are very strong yes absolutely so when a parent feels like maybe maybe what do they do from that point of maybe to getting a final diagnosis and how do okay first i you see this um developmental milestones we should not overlook them and i think that every parent with a uh, every caregiver parents with um infants to babies toddlers should go to the cdc and download the it's free download the guidelines and um, not the guidelines now the milestone um so you see and you know yes it's called a milestone because it's a wide range at this is there's always a, a um like a what's it called now like a space of time let me put it that way from this right. time to this child should be doing this because so like you a never guide apply, to... a guide yeah. mm -hmm. never apply all children but and there are certain things as a caregiver as a parent you, you should just know from mm -hmm. the fact that does your child at six months children start to play engaged play and they start to do what we call shared enjoyment mm. and game play is you know when you take the rattle and you yeah. you take it and rattle it in front of them and they take it they, they they smile they respond to you that's engaged play mm. Mm. if the child doesn't understand engaged play the child does not at eight months does not um recognize you as a familiar adult you mm. walk into the room the child is not i mean a mother walks into the room went all days or went somewhere to even the next room or to work yeah. and she walks into the room and the child is already looking at her like where is she going to again won't you pick me up the mm. child is not even doing that she's not it's not looking at you it's not um having that sort of communication does not understand the environment the child mm -hmm. seems to be self-sufficient. Children should not be self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. When I mean self-sufficient, the child seems to be, um, oh, I want to play alone in my space. I'm fine just playing by myself. Right. Children should not be by themselves. They, they can't, should not play by themselves. So those are like, is it, no one is saying it's cast in stone that this is what is going to come out of this. The child may be having some delays However, you could start intervention. And when we say intervention, it's not rocket science. I remember mm. sewing a bean, a bean bag. I was putting um, like rice and <laughs> rice and beans in the small sack and sewing it together just for okay. to play with my phone to throw. I remember okay. doing that. But you can do things like that. You can do things that would help the child cognitively as well as help some fine motors. It's not yeah. early intervention cannot be overly emphasized. Wow. Wow. Interesting. Interesting. So at what age did you get an an actual diagnosis? Uh, last year, eight years. Okay, at eight. Eight years. Eight year. So is that typical in terms of the length of time it takes or well, no, I guess that because I was working and I was seeing the improvement, yeah. then uh, it, I wasn't um, too worried, but I needed to know exactly what it was. Okay. I remember um, my supervisor who did carry that the test or the test saying, oh, well done, Zussi. Well done. I'm glad you did everything you did. You may not make far you brought this child. Can you hear me? Mm. Okay. Okay. Yes, I can hear you now. You froze a bit. You were saying that when you got the professional diagnosis, they were saying that well done for the things you had been doing along yes, the way to help your son. Yes, that it may not have made so much sense to me as a then, but obviously, I remember something that happened with my son. As soon as he started playing music, I saw that his, his mental 
skills improved. As soon as I start playing the keyboard, playing the piano, is it, it could calculate mentally like this. I don't know how that happened, but I can yeah. tell you that came. So. Okay. Fantastic. Wow. That's thanks for thanks for being so open because you know we I mean it's it's that balance between faith, culture, reality, intervention, you know, it's it's that balance. And that brings us into the next question, which is really around support. When we talk about mental health, we talk about, you know, stress, we talk about how we make decisions, our support system, who's around us, motherhood and parenting and balancing it all is tough enough. When you have a child that needs much more support from you, absolutely is even more you know, challenging. So can you talk a little bit about that from a perspective of positive mental health? And then we'll take some of the questions. From that perspective, what do you do personally to ensure that you seem like a very positive person? So tell us, how do you make sure that, you know what, you stay in a positive place from a mental health perspective and you have the support you need as well? Oh, okay. Yes, I am very positive minded i am but of course there are some days that i'm very low yeah. especially the days that you get those calls from school and you're wondering what has happened again what did you do again you know yeah. when you have life is hard as it is then you have a child that is not um doing as well as his peers or her peers you just there's just this life could become gloomy Mm. knowing that you have to deal with what you have to deal with but if you you want your sons you want your child to do well you want your child to become successful yeah. if you do not um, help your child and you do not get out of that space of um, sadness or, or depression because you can never give what you do not have yeah. you help your child yeah. way forward what's the way forward okay now you have a diagnosis what is the way yes i'm not undermining everything anything you feel however way you feel you want to say god why you want to you have to breathe through it or you yeah. know it's fine but let's not stay there for too long mm. parents i have amazing parents that you know the level of their um of their i will i say their faith. Mm. I, don't, I don't relate it to religion. However, their beliefs or their principles or, yeah, their beliefs is, I know my child is going to be fine. I know yeah. I have to do this and I have to do that. And one of such parents, I think she's here, is um, Simone's Oasis. I, I tell her all the time that I have the permission to mention her name anyways. She's always giving me a permission. I tell her all the time that what you do with this child is amazing and you're always wanting how do you stay this way mm. it's for the goals to show that we need a support system around mm. us there are days you are down you need family you need good domestic support you need um, it takes a village you need an e you need yeah. e support like yeah. <laughs> Lagos Mugs, you need yeah. them. You just need people. And right. please, when you um, find that, that these things, or you find that you have a diagnosis, surround yourself with positive mm -hmm. minded. It's extremely important. Don't start saying, oh, Mr. Goffrey's child that had this thing did not get out of this or mm -hmm. that no there are stories of children that are that were at a level on the spectrum or they were str really struggling and now they can do they are independent they can do certain things for themselves right. i always say something at first we tr help a struggling autistic child become a less or non-struggling autistic child we are not taking you out of the spectrum. The science, there's no, I don't know, maybe some minutes ago there's a cure, but from what I know, there's no cure. And it, it's not a disease that should be cured. Right. It's a difference. It is a difference, right? So please ignore the noise. They are so no, in my kids. It's okay. 
Yeah. So that uh, that's really it. Support yeah. system is good, and there is no point that it's just going to be linear and it's you'll be cruising. No, it's like you're saying a b variability yeah. to it. Go up and you go down. Oh, right. Mo, <laughs> you go up. <laughs> Down. Hello. And you go, <laughs> and you go up, down. go down. Yes, but please try as much as possible to have that support system. If you don't, then you get professional help. Okay. You get professional help. There are professionals, there are psychologists that could, uh, uh, um, um, psychiatrists, psychologists that would see you. But mm. please get help because you cannot do what you do not have. Have. Then I would like to say something. Manage your expectations. Mm. Please manage, expectations. manage your yeah. expectations. You yeah. have a child spectrum. There are no two children on the spectrum that are the same, exactly the same. When mm -hmm. you see an autistic child, one autistic child, you make just one autistic child. There's no other autistic child like that child. So stop looking at another person's child mm -hmm. who is receiving having therapy, ABA therapy, and say, ah, well, that child is not vocal. Why is my child not vocal? In time, manage, let's manage our expectations. Right, right. Yes. So that's a really good point, not to compare. And you also said something earlier that, you know, the goal is to help an autistic child, for example, to be more independent. You are not taking them off the spectrum. You are not trying to heal something. It's not a sickness to heal right it's a difference that you are going to help that child manage and navigate so that that child can thrive in his or her own life and that that is the goal and i feel like when that becomes the goal and it becomes less of a you're praying for healing you're hoping for healing you can still have faith but focus on exactly what the and i, and I think that's a delicate balance right for parents is that you know what balance? <laughs> what I tell parents is when they, they their faith, they say, my faith, believe, I believe in this. I ask them, so who gave me the brain to do what I'm doing? Mm. God gave me the brain. Who gave the surgeons, the scientists, the brain? If God did not want us to heal these things or do this work, he would never give us the brain to do these things. If he wanted to do Very the healing itself, he will not will not have surgeons that have the 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 magical touch. We'll not have all those people, we'll not have teachers, we'll not have people in leadership. So can yeah. we allow can you allow me to do my job? I believe God with you, but this child needs mm -hmm. intervention. Yes. Yes. Wow, thank thanks for sharing that. And yeah, the comments are just, you know, buttressing what you're saying about you know, a support system, about training. And somebody mentioned something about, you know, her family, grandparents, everybody. Let me quickly go up to it. Learning a particular language, the marketing sign. What is that to help people that don't know what that is? What is the um, marketing sign? Uh, is she talking about like a, 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 American Sign Language? Okay, I don't know what that is. But, um, but I think I know what she means is when... For ABA, for example, what we do, applied behavior analysis therapy, because it's kind, it's technical, it's um, empirical, it's measurable, observable, and all those big terminology. Mm. It's a basic training that you have to give caregivers. Mm -hmm. Caregivers that, that are with the children when you are not with the child. That way, there is a, there's this collaboration going on. Okay. I've seen grandmothers Yes, yeah. form of okay, sign. Okay, baby sign language. Okay. It's sign language. I've seen care um caregivers, grandparents do this training so that there is no behavior contracts. For example, a child has learned to do, has learned a particular skill while at the center, and because they are even smart enough to know that this is not the center, the delight is not here. They will do something exactly opposite. <laughs> opposite at home so you want them to whatever skills they've mastered you want them to be able to generalize the skills across different settings so okay. everyone that work with that child should have some fundamental foundational knowledge of mm. um, um 
right. kind of therapy. Yes. So then that brings us to also, you know, the, the domestic staff that people hire, right? Yeah. So when a child is neurodiverse, has different needs, learns differently, has needs different support, how would you advise parents to look for the... Because when we're talking about mental health, we also make, need to make sure that the support system we have around us is the right support system. So how do parents look out for the right support system in the house? To, like you just said, a child can go to a center and get everything he or she needs from, I don't know, 8 a.m. to 2 o'clock. But the minute they come home from 3 to 9 when they go to bed, what happens in that six hours? Okay. Well, you know, humans will be humans. I, I pray that we have um, staff, support system that, are, that have empathy. Mm. I mean, that's a very key word or key quality when working with children with additional needs, right? Mm. If you have a nanny that, you, of course, you, you watch, does this nanny, how does she respond to this kind of behavior? Does she even understand this? You need to, in the process of employing this nanny, I think you should let the nanny know that you have a child with additional needs. So the nanny does not come um, so looking all surprised, hi, looking all surprised and all. And when the nanny is interested in this child, the nanny has empathy, please, Provide the nanny with this foundational training. Right. Let this nanny be trained. Yes. Let this nanny, because the, the training is quite essential because not only for the support, which when you're working on a skill, let me give an example. Now you're working on a particular skill. There's mm -hmm. something that is, you're trying to reduce a, a, a behavior. There's something we call a behavior extinction burst. So you're trying to put this kind of tantrum, tantruming behavior into um, fading it off, into extinction and all. Behavior extinction boss, the behavior would increase before pff, it stops, ah, right? Okay. If the nanny or the parents at home, they do not know that this is a process, they would give up. Because naturally, the, this behavior would just go oh like what is this this i'm trying to work on this thing this thing is getting, it's worse. getting worse so there will definitely so things like that are to be expected then we'll then talk about ethical considerations yeah as in that it's not for you to tell anybody everybody in your neighborhood that hey sammy has ah you don't know what's wrong with sammy sammy's like this no you yeah. shouldn't do that against the law you should not do that so mm. they need basic training is quite yes. essential yes so would you say then that it's worth i don't know if they exist is it worth then hiring nannies who have already gone through a kind of sensitization and training for this versus hiring them and then doing the work and hoping they take to the training i wonder if it's something that exists but you know there's a gap yeah. That's a gap because I really do not think that exists. And if there's someone here that would like to have like a nanny service, I, I know that the nanny service I use, yes, they, they do some training, but not yet on um, developmental disorders and all that. No, on, on how to work with children with behavioral issues, not yet. So I think that's a gap. That's a business idea for someone that's interested. Yeah, that just came to me as we're talking now that, you know, instead of you know? To hire them <laughs> first to train them, imagine if you can go somewhere where they've already equipped them. And like you said, every child, will be different. every child on the spectrum will be different. But I'm sure there are some basic, you know, there's some basic, you know, um, sensitization that if they have, it wouldn't hurt. All right. Yes. Say, the basic, go ahead. The basic thing we should all know is the ABC of behavior. Mm. What's that? So with the, the, the ABC of the behavior, beha any behavior is there's an antecedent. The A is the antecedent. The B is the behavior in itself. And the C is the consequence. So, of course, the C that is the consequence could either make that behavior occur more frequently and on a higher level, or mm -hmm. it could stop, reduce the behavior. So in the consequence, we have the reinforcers and we have the punisher. Punisher in the sense that not punitive, but there are several techniques to, to do that. And then there's the reinforcer that increases the behavior. So 
with this basic technique, because for everything we do, you know, I gave an example of a child that is, that the mom walks into the room or the dad walks into the room and the child is all going, hey, happy. And the dad carries that child up or the mom carries that child up, like, oh, I'm back from work and, you know, give that child a, a spin around. Tomorrow, the child, the dad walks in, the child will do that again. The child will be yeah. because... Because they want that reward, yes. Yes, they enforce that behavior, right? Mm. So for every behavior that we do consistently and on a higher, there's some sort of um, reinforcement we get. There's mm. some sort of um, um, satisfaction that we get, for example. And it could be even be a private behavior. It could be a private event. You are hungry. I don't know that you are hungry. But yeah. you're hungry. You, you I'm not someone that would eat in my house. But because you're very hungry, I offer you food. You will eat. And after eating, how do you feel? You feel satisfied. You're feeling relieved. So food is like the, a reinforcer, you know, when you're hungry and all that. So if we can, I mean, this is a basic uh, um, rule, a basic principle that um, even our nannies will understand the ABC. You will not know what the C is, what contingencies you are putting in place in your home. And they can be quite basic. They can be quite basic. I all advise parents to always use behavior contracts. Neurotypical children, neurodivergent children are like behavior contracts work. And so, go on. <laughs> Thank you. you. You really schooled us today. I, I want to talk about something that's a bit, you know, in fact, when we talk about how we met, right, we met through the whole online safety, digital well, the digital citizenship. Yes. Our children are in a digital world. They don't know a world before digital. So they are growing up with technology at their fingertips. How would you say that um, a neurodiverse child, how are they able to participate, right, in this digital reality? I think they are... <laughs> I think they are the participants going go in that digital world really because there's something that is called hyper focus, mm. especially for children that um, are maybe on the spectrum, have ADHD, there's something called hyper focus, right? Yeah. So what does hyper focus mean? That thing they like to do, they are so engrossed in it, they don't want to stop to. And usually those things are video games, uh, Roblox. You see that Roblox, Minecraft? Yeah. That's it's a, it's a world on mm. its own. Mm. I remember reading up your page when you said something like, oh, a child telling their mom, my best friend, mommy, yeah. don't do my best friend. Oh, nice. Their best friend virtual best friend i can relate to that so relate because my son has some amazing friends that his buddies that his best friends he's never met them he doesn't know whether they are tall or short if they what color they are he has no idea but they are best of friends you know? yes so children like that because Sometimes they're not, um, you see these things we call inward or you see these things we call, um, you use the eye to talk to somebody and the person understands, you subtly make a remark and it, they have no idea what those things are. You have to tell them straight up. Straight up. That this, yes, they, sometimes you have to work on even personal space boundaries for them to get it. You have yeah. to visualize schedules and all that for them to get it. These children are now in a world where if they don't have the support, they don't know what is right and what is acceptable, mm. they would fall prey to anything. Yeah. When I read your um, checklist, yeah. I remember seeing it early hours of the morning and I was like, oh God, oh God, I need to have a conversation with these children. I need yeah. to have a conversation. That day I had a conversation with them and that uh, kind of, <laughs> there was a ripple effect from that conversation. There's, my son came, that was when I knew that girls used to. So I had some girls who say, hey, can they be his girlfriend right in <laughs> Roblox? I said, oh, really? Yeah. He, said, he doesn't want any girlfriend, just wants more Roblox. He wants to be a billionaire <laughs> in Roblox. Yeah. 
<laughs> Roblox and all. So what he did, he later told me that evening what he did that he had he had gone to hack. He went to hack into another person's Roblox. The currency in Roblox is Robux. Yeah. He went to in stole that person's money. I mean, this is my son I'm talking about. Wow. He stole that person's money and used it to buy himself a server. A Roblox server where nobody can approach him unless he approaches yeah. them. He was telling me that he had done something so cool. Yes, it is cool, but did you have to go and hack? <laughs> did you have to go and hack? How did you hack like, the hacking, hacking one? I, I just told him, you know, you connect, you yeah. praise before you. Correct. I said, oh, wow, how did you do that? What did you do? How did you do that? And then I, I said, you know what, please, you are not a thief. Do you know what that is? He said, no, it's not stealing. I said, it's stealing. Is it yours? He didn't think it was stealing because it's virtual. Absolutely. I said, no. He said, he said, people hack him. I said, yeah, then they are stealing from you. Yeah. You don't have to steal from these people. You have some Roblox. I will give you more and then you can still get your server. Is there a way you can return the person's Roblox? He said, no. <laughs> There's no giving back. I yeah. know, I know, but I mean, that was... All, all this came from having the conversation after reading the checklist and yeah, wow thanks mm -hmm. thanks for sharing that and it's a reminder that you know what we shouldn't assume that they know we shouldn't assume that they know what is supposedly the right behavior because they are growing up in a virtual world they are growing up on this on the social media streets as i call it video game streets it's very uh, yeah our reality so we have to you know like you said connect talk to them and that's why i did that checklist just 20 things and there's no parent that has gone through the checklist that has said my goodness i realized i haven't even started and the thing that's that I felt, yeah. yes and the thing <laughs> with that world is it's not a conversation you have today and say i have done it i will not talk again you are constantly rinse and repeating rinse and repeating reminding them talking oh, again, yes. reminding you know oh, yes. checking and yes. checking Fantastic. True. And and one more thing I wanted to say about the digital world is just that there's something called the disinhibition effect, which is that when people are online and virtually, they behave very differently than in real life. So people are yeah. growing in a world where the things they will say, the things they will do online, they will never yeah. do it in person. But because they are spending so much time online, they, they have like a different personality that doesn't yeah. impact the real life. Yeah. Yes, so, and that's that. I think the psychologist here would say that that's like a split personality absolutely. issue, and it's cool. absolutely yeah. because they have their houses, they have cars, yeah. they have relationships. Some are even married with children. Can you imagine? In Roblox. Yes. So, for example, absolutely. when I talk to parents about talking to your children about dating, I'm like, you don't, you cannot say you are going to wait till your child is older. Your child might be eleven years old and have a whole family online. And you don't even know. And they, are, they can be doing acts online that simulating yeah. physical relationships and intimacy. Yeah. So your child might be having a full relationship, you know, virtually, that might even feel more real than in person. So we cannot afford to say, ah, no, 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 I won't talk about love yet. Because digital love is very different than when we, we were waiting. I was telling my daughter the other day about phone numbers and how if somebody likes you before, they will ask you for your phone number. And you will decide whether or not you want to give them the phone. <laughs> You're just looking at me like, eh. Hey. Like, what, yeah. what is that? What is <laughs> now we just slide into my DM. Slide into my DM and we start talking. So it's such oh, a... Yeah. <laughs> but thank you so much. This has been so insightful. I'm glad. I feel like I know you, even though, same here, we've only met online. But, uh, uh, yeah. you know... Exactly, you see. <laughs> it's online. You but, cannot blame the children. You can actually have a connection with someone online. And you've never physically <laughs> met them. But I like, as we start to wrap up, you know, people have been sharing comments and all of that. I would like you to just wrap up with two or three things you would say are your takeaway or what you would like to give people that listen to. So if you're a parent here, you're a mom, you're thinking about, okay, how do I really manage 
you know, my mental health so that I can be in a positive place to take care of my children? How do I focus on the, what my child needs if my child should be neurodiverse? And the expectations that you would say are important we keep in mind. So just give us two or three takeaways from, from you today. Okay. Uh, the first thing I would say is, um, please, you matter first, even before your child. You, yourself, you might, like... God does not have grandchildren. Mm. God, you're not God's grandchild. Just like you are God's child, that's how your child is God's child. So definitely, your child will be fine. Mm. You have to try to be happy. Try, find happiness. Do those things that um, make you... If you have to go to the movies, you have to hang out, do some things, just ensure that you're intentional in doing those things oh yeah in doing those things and for your child can we focus or can you focus on your child's strengths mm. what are your child's strengths what are the skills it's so one of the easiest way of knowing strengths is um whether uh, for the neurodiverse now when i say neurodiverse neurotypical and neurodiversity i like is the things that the child is drawn to right so I, I use the of the the keyboard for my son when the school's head teacher Miss um, Nika said, "Ah, your son likes the keyboard," and I just got a keyboard. I started mm -hmm. off. It doesn't matter. Tomorrow, my son could like something else, and I would explore yeah. everything that your child is drawn to because you never really know how that thing would help your child even achieve and um, other developmental milestones or other things mentally. You really do not know, mm -hmm. but do not sit down and do nothing. Mm. Yes. yes. If you suspect something, do not sit down and do nothing. Don't say that um, um, it would it would get better doing nothing. It's not. It doesn't always work that way. If it's just pitch delay, right? Mm. It is still for you to start intervention, yeah. and then the child becomes vocal. Oh well, I'm good. Right. But. What if that speech delay is caused by something underlining that needs attention yeah. and underlining uh, um, 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 consign or what I... if it's autism? Because that's where most parents start noticing when the child is supposed to start um, to become vocal, the child is not vocalizing and the child is not responding. And this child is already like two. That's when mm -hmm. they start noticing. The window is from that early months to five years. That's the window. Yeah. It gets as they grow older. So early intervention, early intervention. Yes. Fantastic. Yes. I'll summarize. You said, <laughs> believe your child, it will be fine. I love what you said. There's no grandchild. God doesn't have any grandchildren. We're all <laughs> God's. Uh, make, make yourself happy it might be difficult but find what it is you need for your own mental health and make yourself happy and take time to do it um you said also focus on your child's strengths right and help your child explore strengths you know and it can change and when it changes change with them you know but yeah. explore your child's strengths and so that we minimize focusing on the weaknesses and this is even for neurotypical children some parents can sit down yeah. Just focus on the weakness. What about the strengths? Let's let's do more of that. And then after... let, me, let me add something to that. Yes, I, I share this right. The more when you keep focusing on the weakness, you realize that it is you. It, it is your own your fears, your concerns, and your 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 worries that you are putting yeah. out there. A perfect example, the day you go to work, you are stressed, you had you couldn't meet your deadline, you come home, you see the house, the sitting room all scattered, you will scream the house down like they've not fixed this place, they've not done this, they've not done that. But that same scenario, take it that same house, you are coming from work, you had such you had a promotion, you had a very good day at work, the house is even as scattered or even more scattered. Yeah. You come home, you are laughing, telling the children, if you see what happened at work today, yeah. you put it in a rage display. That yeah. goes to show that it is you. It is you. It is you. So 
So whenever you have concerns, think about it. Is it how you look when maybe a, your child is behaving a certain way? Is it how that behavior reflects upon you as a mom or right. it is really a problem? Right. That's, that's a great example because the situation in itself is neutral. Is the emotions you put behind it and the actions you choose to take that makes all the difference. Yeah. yeah. And the last takeaway you had for us was intervene early. Don't wait. If there's a speech delay, don't wait it out. Don't wait till the child is two or three before you start. If you notice at eight months that the child is not doing ba ba boo boo back to you, start doing something. The earlier you start, you cannot file for intervening early. You cannot. You can only help the child. And if he resolves, it gets better, fantastic. But it's better to do something early than wait till later because it gets more difficult. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank you. Now, can you tell everybody how they can connect with you, how they can find you, where your center is? You know, how do we, how do we continue getting more from you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm so easy to find. Like I say, I'm in Lekki, um, phase one. I my first creative um for, yes first creative ads i think first underscore creative ads that's what we are on instagram on linkedin my name is osaizuci bolo dioku mm -hmm. and we're in lucky phase one or more of omori region scene okay then you can reach us on 0703 mm -hmm. 603 um should I, do I have to type that? Or, you can or? type it. Maybe you type it in as I okay. wrap. Thank everybody. And then we'll end. But fantastic. So we can find you on. So, okay. Thank you, Tonya. Tonya has written out your. Yeah. Tonya is a friend. And um, friend. Okay. She's been very active. Hi, Tonya. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so you said how they can find you. You said where your center is. And you're putting in your phone number. So anybody who wants to talk to you can get in. I mean, my phone just told me my so, so we okay. are <laughs> we are done thank you for participating thank you everybody for joining like i said this is lagos moms <laughs> and we talk about parenting raising children digital citizenship online safety everything that takes that it takes for us to raise wholesome independent adults that are going to thrive because we're not raising children we're raising adults and adults, to make yeah raise them to be responsible, independent. We need to go backwards and say, what do we need to start doing today? So that when they are 20, 25, we won't be saying, yeah, 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 I should have. It's too late then. <laughs> so for us, you can find us on at Lagos Moms on all platforms. And our website, lagosmoms.com, has a lot of articles. It's our headquarters for everything. Yeah. And the particular checklist we were talking we were referencing here on this um on this insta live is 20 tips 20 things parents need to discuss with their children so far your child is a digital native and is online go and download that checklist it's 20 things minimum you want to start talking about because Please download. yes <laughs> the more you talk the more you empower your children to know how to make the right decisions the more you are equipping them to avoid the, the 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 red flags and to avoid the potholes in the online world because those potholes are there you know it's just how yes, we yes, our yes, children yes. so all right <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much again zuzi love to the family uh, thank you for having me <laughs> thank you. thanks for sharing and thank you everyone for tuning in i will i will download this and it will be a replay because i know a lot of people will watch later pause play again so we will share a replay of this for other people to watch. All right, everyone. All right. Bye. Yeah. Oh, download the checklist. It's in the link in my bio. If you go to at Lagos Moms and you go to link in bio, you will see the checklist for parents raising children in the digital age. So you can download it and get a copy for yourself. It's a free resource. So go do it. All right. Bye, everyone.